Hey, friends of the Tennis and Bagels podcast. My name is Andre, and I'm here with Owen and Vansh. And the Australian Open starts tomorrow, finally. Um, maybe not for everybody who is in Australia right now. And uh, Djokovic might not play still. Uh, we are delaying our um, ATP draws uh, preview of that for that particular reason. I mean, he's world number one. If he was just like a world number 50 or something, maybe he would still do it. But Jovak, no, Jovak, Novak Djokovic um, has won it nine times. And if he plays or not, actually is a big deal <laughs> uh, for previews and picks and anything. So we are just going to wait a little bit. Um, so today is just going to be an WTA. And whatever happens to Djokovic happens, uh, get vaccinated and uh, stay safe and stay home um, and social distance. COVID-19 is still real. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Uh, doing okay. I mean, this the Djokovic controversy is not making it easy to be on Twitter, but trying to just tell myself that the Australian Open starts in 36 hours or something like that um, mm -hmm. and waiting for that. Yeah, same. I'm just waiting to see what happens, uh, yeah. what conclusion comes out of this whole thing. And hopefully it just comes to an end soon. We get an outcome. Yeah. And we just start talking about tennis, seriously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Actually, th this no. feels like Isner Mahout or something, where like by the end, it's like, I don't care who wins. I just want <laughs> someone to win so we can move on to other and better things. Yeah. It's like, it, it, it is almost a good comparison too, because it's at the end of that match, you're just like, man, I don't care. This man is suffering so hard. Right. <laughs> I just want this match to finish for the sake of both of them. Of course, Mahout um, was very depressed. Apparently, he wrote a, in, in his book that was depressed for like six months after that oh, loss. Oh, no. I mean, that, yeah. that's such a shame, too, because um, yeah. Isner got destroyed in the next round. Like, I it know. wasn't an important match. <laughs> like, I think as soon as it went past like 10 all or something, whoever yeah. won was going to be screwed anyway. Poor guy. Yeah. And un well, unlike hopefully... Isner, he's unproblematic. So. Hopefully, this is the fifth set tie break. Yeah. That yeah. was yeah. right. A 12 all. Right. Yeah. Man, I, I was going to say, oh yeah, I was just, I just remember, um, this is going to be a brutal two weeks for me, probably at least the first one, because, um, we have Canadians everywhere in the draw. And, uh, as the listeners might know, I do social media. If you, if you follow tennis Canada, I'm the one putting up all the gifts and templates and stuff. Um, like 90% of the tweets are, I am doing them. So the Australian Open has decided to place Canadians in both sides of the draw. So I'll be up all night, pretty much every day for the next week. If they go decide to break every possible expectations and do a Leila Fernandez and reach the final, I will be dead by February. So, Andre, you need to message Craig Tiley, get him to rake the draws for you so you can get some sleep. Yeah. Can you guys at least put every single Canadian in the same side of the draw? Right. And then you actually, can, like, never mind, though, because then, yeah, because that, that's not good. Last year we had like Felix and Dennis in the third round, and that sucked. <laughs> so, yeah. True. I guess this is a good time to plug, to plug to our listeners to follow Tennis Canada on Twitter. Yeah. yeah like uh, all that, Tennis Canada. That blue check, 50,000 followers. That is Andre Rolenberg, our fearless yeah. uh, fearless leader, founder. Uh, go follow them. <laughs> go follow Andre. Yeah. Uh, it'll be the best decision of your life. Yeah. And if you're undecided with whether you should follow me, like you can just at least follow Tennis and Bagels because he has the touch of uh, Owen and Vansh as well. So, uh, yeah. Be very happy if you did. So, anyways, you guys ready to start WTA? Uh, the least problematic. If <laughs> Tennis face right now, so uh, I am so ready. Yeah, <laughs> let's cool. do it. Yeah, uh, matches that that come up to your mind. Like, how do you guys want to do it? Like, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be doing like every quarter, or every match because who has time for that? So, right. yeah, yeah um, we can just start with the body um, gauntlet. <laughs> sure, which is the top half. Like, nice. Yeah, I I mean, so we do obviously see. Uh, there's quite a bit of really good matchups um, because Osaka is uh, the 13th seed. Yeah. And she and Barty could meet in the fourth round. That's but to get there. Yeah. Like Osaka has so many difficult opponents she has to yeah. beat. You know, from even her first round, Camilio Sario Serrano is like not an easy opponent. Mm -hmm. She's she's pretty good. She won a title last year at the very end of the year. Um, she's young and she has she doesn't have much to lose. Then there's um, Diana Yastremska, who's a really big hitter. Um, but I feel like those two are those two are a pretty safe bet that if Osaka's in the right mindset and she's playing some her best tennis because she is the best uh, on a yeah. hard court, like at her mm -hmm. best. 
So I, I like her to get to the third round, but then um, she could possibly meet Bencic and, or Anisimova. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anisimova won a title last week and Bencic matches up really well against Osaka and she's won a gold medal and she's pretty confident right now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Although her Grand Slam record isn't the ultimate best. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but it's also we also know that Osaka tends to be more vulnerable in the early rounds than the late rounds. Yeah. Um, if like kind of an on fire opponent can um play her in an early round before Osaka really has time to settle and find her confidence in her rhythm. Yeah. So it almost feels like that third rounder could be more of a pitfall than like a quarterfinal or a semifinal if she eventually gets through yeah. Ashbardy in the fourth round. Yeah. But do you guys, what do you guys think? Is it a good thing or a bad thing that we might have uh, if we end up having Ash Barty versus Osaka in the fourth round? Because it was something that we wanted to see, a match between those yeah. two. <laughs> but we kind of were dreaming for a final, or at least a semi. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I was I laughing know, right? about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's a good thing because we, we love that matchup. Uh, they played once in 2019. We just thought they would meet so many more times and it just hasn't quite panned out that way because of schedule, their, the way they've scheduled themselves or uh, you know, where they've ended up in the draw. So from that standpoint, it'd be really nice to have a competitive hard court match between those two because, you know, Bardi is like a well deserving number one and Osaka is the best yeah. on the hard court when she's mm-hmm. at her best. But then you also wish that it was later on in the tournament and not in the fourth round because yeah. we, we really wanted to see like a final or a semi between them. Yeah, yeah I, I'm honestly not too fussed about it being in the fourth round. I think the matchup mm-hmm. is so enticing, arguably the most enticing matchup in this entire draw. So I think if we get it at all, it's a win. I think yeah. if it happens, the winner will deserve to win the tournament. And if someone else goes on to beat the winner of that matchup, then she'll deserve it even more. So um, so I don't really see a, yeah. like a lose a losing scenario if this matchup does happen. Yeah, I think it would be good for Vardy if she wins against Osaka, because that might give her the, the, the final boost that she needs of confidence to, to go on and win the tournament. Yeah, finally, I, I mean, but, th- yeah. Th- that would also like give her a pretty good argument that she's the best on any surface uh, if she beats Osaka yeah. on a hard yeah. court. Like, that would be incredible. Yeah. I mean, depending right. on Osaka, how Osaka plays, because if she's not doing mm-hmm. well, then it's a different story. But yeah. Yeah. I'm a little, just a little concerned for her in the third round against Bencic, because I mean, Bencic, mm. I mean, she's only made one major semifinal, but she has a very good record against like top players and majors, like mm-hmm. without going on and winning them. But she's uh, she's made like two two or three quarters and a yeah. semi. And um, yeah, she's, she's kind of tricky because yeah. she takes the ball really early and she's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Enesimova Enes, is a similarly huge hitter, so it feels like um, whichever of them Osaka ends up playing in the third round, if she makes it there, is just going to be like a heavyweight clash and not one that mm-hmm. will be really easy to win comfortably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. do we think we get that uh, in the fourth round? I think so. But I would just say I think Enesimova is going to be benchage in, in that second round. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm going to be optimistic and say yes as well. I feel like both of them, I mean, we know Osaka takes things round by round, but I think both of them are going to be incredibly motivated. You know, Osaka is the defending champion. Bardi is the world number one. This is her home slam, slam event. Um, So I think both of them are really, really going to want to win. And so from that standpoint, I would be surprised if either of them lost early or lost to anything less than like a really God mode performance from someone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Anisimova has a good good shot at beating uh beating benches with the form that she's in right now like with the title for sure with uh, darren mm-hmm. kehill in her corner and stuff yeah. yeah so yeah i i think i think we should we will get that match i think we'll have um we'll have some fun yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah imagine if we get a uh, an anisimova halop final i think halop's on the other side of the draw and then uh then darren kehill would be commentating women. that Oh my oh, yeah. goodness! Would he <laughs> commentate really... on a match of a player that he is coaching? Does it, that... he, he he's done it before? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I mean, like people shouldn't do that. I remember um, yeah, John McEnroe commentated the Wimbledon, Wimbledon final with Raonic. It's like right. your your motivations are so obviously compromised. Um, I know. So it just shouldn't happen. But, but... At least if it's Halep versus Anisimova, he'd have kind of biased up for those two players instead of like against <laughs> any. So. I mean... Yeah, it's yeah, a that's true. tricky situation. Like I, I know Paul Anikon, like he on, on tennis channel, yeah. you know, because like Fritz is always playing, and sometimes he's ends up commentating. Like it's just just happens. Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I don't know if it was him on the on the commentators booth in the ATP Cup, but he sucked to watch him against uh, Felix Ogiali Asim because he was speaking of like Fritz as if it was like 
world number five at this point in his career oh, I, I remember <laughs> that yeah and it was like dude are you gay? you have got to be kidding me he choked so hard on the tiebreaker <laughs> And you keep talking to him as if it's going to be the little next. Oh, right, yeah, thing. yeah. Fitz like, was a six-two or something, and then yeah, yeah he was one six points. Or he double faulted and he just couldn't get, get himself together. He did yeah, win the good. match, but that's the a jinx right there. Yeah, but, but that's exactly why it shouldn't happen because you're either going to yeah. be like talking up your player so much that it's not unbiased, or you're going to be like trashing your player, which probably oh, yeah. sucks for the player. <laughs> yeah, so it would, it's just it, no one wins. <laughs> It probably would suck for the comment the the coach because they would probably lose their job after this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Do you see any roadblocks for Barty potentially to get to the fourth round? I mean, I the first two rounds don't seem that bad. I yeah, I, not really. I, I don't think so. I mean, um, she has Georgie. she has had losses like that one to uh Rogers at the U.S. Open that show that like she's mortal. But I mean, looking at the draw, I don't see yeah. that being a problem. I think Georgie, she has so much power, but she can also be so erratic. I think Barty yeah. will be more than solid enough to put her away if that matchup happens. Yeah, I think I think Georgie is going to struggle because Barty is an excellent mover, uh, and Georgie is too. But like, if uh, if a player can defend against Georgie, it can become ugly for for her. Yeah, and plus this slice is not going to make mm. Georgie happy. Yeah, court. and, and Barty can outserve her, and I think like uh, during her service games in particular, um, maintain the offensive most of the time. Um, another mm-hmm. name that jumps out to me in this upper section is uh, Lauren Davis. I mean, I'm not sure how her form has been recently, but um, in 2018, she had a really good run at the Australian Open, almost beat Simona Halep in a marathon in the third round, um, and her her peak level is really really high. So I think if if she can find that, she can definitely make some noise in that section. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So but another thing about it. Yeah, another thing about the. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. My voice was was cutting off. You can go ahead. Oh no! I was just saying. Uh, I think that uh, the 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 Shelby Rogers was a little bit of an anomaly for Barty in a way because it was at the end of the year and she was already like showing signs of being tired. And I think that was the last match that she played, right? Uh, in 2021. Yeah, she hasn't played since the U.S. Open. Yeah. So she's she's got, she got that time off, and then she's yeah. fresh off the title in uh, yeah. Adelaide. And, yeah. so, so yeah, I, I feel like it's going to be harder than that to take her out, like in an early earlier round. So I think if she's going out, she's going to go out to Osaka. Gotcha. So yeah. so do we all think it's going to be Osaka and Barty then, which probably yeah. means we'll end up with a George Andy Estramska instead. Yeah. Yep. This is exactly how it did how it happened in the. In Montreal last year, so that's exactly what's going <laughs> to yeah. happen. I, I, I think there'll be some that. chaos, but yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah. this section, there's usually one or two sections in Australia, especially in Australia. I feel like it's the most um, because players are like fresh and they're coming off a mm-hmm. consistent part of the year or yeah. success the year before. I feel like it's uh, it usually can continue on. Like yeah. we're seeing that with um, Kritikova, Kontave, and Sakri, yeah. and so yeah. Yeah, it feels like of any major, th- this would be the one that would hold to seeding the most. I mean, maybe Wimbledon because um, there are so few grass specialists now. But yeah, yeah, it does feel like um, the top seeds will do pretty well here. Yeah. Oh, another thing about uh, if Barty and Osaka meet, I think <laughs> it could be a really good match. But how good must it be to top um, Kontave Kritikova <laughs> this week? Oh my oh, god, that, yeah. that was insane. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean when uh when Contivate hit those two backhand winners um at six four and six five down uh match points to get to six all, I was like, I mean that's surely gonna be the decisive passage yeah. of play. And then the tiebreak went on for like 14 points. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. believe what I was watching. No, it was like 14 12 at the end. Yeah, 14, 12, ridiculous yeah. tiebreak. Yeah. <sighs> and, like they're both playing so well too. Like even on the match point, um, Contivate had a shot that like barely missed the baseline. It's like neither of them were really faltering. It's like yeah. winners are four errors on every point. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. good. I should do a podcast just about that match. Yeah. And uh yeah. and we'll we'll get to them soon in the draw as well. Yes. Um yes. so sure. this this second section is uh headlined by uh Maria Sakari, fifth seed and on stripper ninth seed. Um do we see them meeting in the fourth round or are there players here that can mix that up? Hmm. Uh, Sasnovich. Sasnovich is tricky. Yeah, she has variety. Um, yeah. But oh yeah, Jabor is an interesting one because she uh, yeah. she played uh, Contivate this week and then she had to retire from yeah. the injury. Yeah. And then she missed a lot of um, at the end of last year after Indian Wells. She didn't. She couldn't qualify for the WTA finals. I I really hope she's healthy because yeah. 
and like she's one of them she's one of my favorite players to watch mm-hmm. same i mean i think the fact that she's still in the draw says a lot yeah. um yeah. I mean, Sasnovich is a really interesting player because she returns incredibly well, so she's going to break her opponent a lot. But at the same time, um, she doesn't play that many points on her racket because yeah. um, she's more consistent than powerful, doesn't have a huge serve. Um, so while she's definitely capable of upsets, um, I don't really see her winning this section. But it will be interesting mm-hmm. to see if she plays Sakari in the second round because that's not someone you want to play in the second round. So. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think two yeah. players in this that are pretty kind of underrated is like... Um... Bernardo Pera and Alexandrova. Yeah. Those two are like, you know, they're always uh, they're always tricky like to to get to beat in the first couple of rounds. Mm. It's like like Bernardo Pera is like a tricky lefty. She's she can make matches pretty physical. Yeah. She can beat she was, some top players every now and then. She was up a set um against Anna Samova. She was completely yeah. rolling her. I was just amazed at the quality of her backhand uh, in that set. Um and Anna Samova came back to win, but it shows that Pera is definitely capable of um taking down top players yeah yeah um, i think for jabora like the just trying to like make sense of this for here yeah i think if she has to be um scary about an opponent like where or oh, very of her is jessica pigula yeah she right. could um definitely like take her out i think in round three i think yeah mm-hmm. yeah i don't see jabora losing in the first two rounds if she's healthy um yeah but against pigula in the third round that could definitely be tricky yeah. Yeah. I could see it against Pagula or Alexandrova yeah. uh, in the third round. But yeah, I th- I feel pretty confident about Sakari getting to the quarterfinals. Yeah. yeah. To the quarterfinals. Okay. So um uh, so you think she'll her seed. Holding her seed because she's the fifth seed. Right. So, yeah. Um so you think she'll beat Jabor or uh Pagula? Uh yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, she's just been so so consistent in getting to these. Yeah. Uh, and she final. usually plays. Um, she usually plays like a really physical match, either yeah. in the third or fourth yeah. round, yeah. and she's. Yeah, I mean that that match against Andrescu with the U.S. Open was wild. I mean, in the last yeah. few games, it was such a visible struggle for Andrescu to stay in points. Um, mm-hmm. And and by the end, she was just completely gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. I I think. Um, I mean, again, this is a big if because we don't know how fit Jabor is going to be. But I think, I think a peaking Jabor would beat Sakari. Um, yeah, yeah, I think a peaking Jabor would. I, I just worry that like it'll get so physical that uh, you know at some point Jabor might mm, yeah. might struggle to keep up because she's she yeah. has been a little bit more injury prone last year, especially yeah. with. Um, I think if, if Jabor is is injury this week, I think is if Jabor is peaking, like her ceiling is higher than Sakari's. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it will depend, I guess, uh, if if Jabor is making her shots, is if uh, and if Sakari isn't getting frustrated to stay in points and like keeping the ball back in play because she can definitely do that for for hours and hours. Yeah. Um, the Andrescu match is a clear example of that. But yeah, it's it's tough to pick pick between these two. Um, Consistence wise, I would say probably Sakari is my favorite to go through, and yeah. I think her ranking kind of reflects that. But it, it, who knows? Like I think Jabor could actually surpass like all expectations and make it into the quarters as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really hope we get this match off because that would be another dream fourth rounder, like the fifth yeah. seed and the ninth seed, two players who had such exceptional years last year, who are kind of right on the cusp of like breaking through to win a major or make a major final. Um, both with their peak levels so high. I mean, Sakari has become one of the best servers on tour. And Jabor, with her power and variety, uh, can just blow anyone away, as we saw against uh, Sviantec at Wimbledon last year. So, um, so yeah, um, all fingers crossed that Jabor is healthy um, yeah. and that we get this in the fourth round. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, and agree. then before, uh, yeah. Before yeah, you get I, to... I have one in five meeting in the quarters. It's chalk. One in five meeting. But, like, I'm going chalk on this section. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting, right? Like how 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 much how many times do we do we do we feel so confident now? Like I feel like the WTA is kind of getting to a level of consistency in the, how their players are performing, like mm. day in day out. Not necessarily that, that one are like that much better than the other, but yeah. I mean, yeah. um, I, I think everyone is still upset prone at like yeah. big tournaments just because of the astonishing depth of the field. But I think the top players really have like established a line of consistency recently, uh, which has been really impressive to see. Yeah. I mean, we had a 
Contivate and uh, Krejcikova, that absolute classic. Um, and then Bedosa and uh, Krejcikova played a really good close final as well. Um, Bedosa is mm-hmm. another high seed. So yeah, I'm. I, and I think things will be really, really exciting. I mean, even if they don't, but if the seeds hold, um, yeah. we're going to get a ton of amazing matches. Yeah. 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 Before we call a uh, winner of the quarterfinals into the semis, we can move on to the next uh, section. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys also have that though? Um, Barty Sakari? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hopefully we'll disagree a little more. <laughs> um, this sounds like ATP drop preview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so, so this section is another really interesting one because first and foremost, we've got Sarah Sariba Sormo, 32nd seed in here. Um, but um, we also have fourth seed Krajikova and um, eighth seed Bedosa, who just won a tournament. Yeah. Um, I think this is one of the most sacked sections in the draw. You've got yeah. a first yes. rounder between Kennan and Keys. Uh, you have a first rounder between Svitolina and Fiona Farrow, who's unseated but is capable of upsets for sure. Azarenka is in the section. Ostapenko is in the section. Uh, you have Allison Risk. Um, yeah, I think they're Coco Goff. I think there are a ton of potential uh, trip wires for the top seats. Yeah, I would agree. I actually yeah. have one, my dark horse in this section is Victoria Azarenka. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Excellent. I, I think she lost a, a close match to Sviantek in Adelaide. Mm. And she's looked really good. Indian Wells final last year. I think finished her season pretty strong um, mm-hmm. and then like Svitolina is the seed and Svitolina recently hasn't been in great form and she's usually prone to hitting a really good player in the early rounds of a major and then just not quite having the peak level to mm-hmm. to come up with a win yeah, yeah. Uh, um I, I'm not sure if this is biased just because Azarenka's won majors before but to me, she feels like a legitimate threat to win the title, whereas um, Svitolina mm-hmm. and Goff and Kennan, to me, don't quite feel like they're there yet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think... Um, yeah, I think Azarenka could make it past Svitolina. I think Svitolina tends to not play as aggressive as she should in, in majors and ends up losing close matches or matches that she should win because I don't know if it's like nerves or the the pressure of being in a grand slam that just kind of changes your mentality mm-hmm. but she hasn't really performed very well like in in virtue of her ranking you can see that she her level kind of job she hasn't been as consistent last year either yeah so yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Oh, yeah. although uh Svetlana you know, was quite good at the u.s open um she was, against she was. Fernandez that was, was really really that was close. her best major last year yeah. She, was, yeah. she was phenomenal actually she beat help and straight yeah. sets yeah, yeah, that that was really impressive because a lot of those rallies were really physical and Svitolina yeah. totally outplayed her. Yeah. And it depends. If if Azarenka gets to play the same level, same level as she did um the US Open, I think two two years ago, or uh in the Wells last year, I think she's got a pretty good shot at um making it far into this tournament. Who knows, maybe even winning. Yeah. I mean, um th- this won't surprise you guys, but one of the most exciting um pro- prospective matches in the section is a, a third rounder between Bedosa and Sariba Stormo. Um, cause Bedosa is like a very offensive player. Um, but she also doesn't go for too much. She's quite consistent. And so the idea of Suriba Stormo trying to defend against that, um, I think it'd be a very physical match. Um, mm. th- they're friends. So I think that could be an interesting dynamic. Um, and I, I think that could be a marathon. So I'm rooting for that to happen. Yeah. I was going to ask about Suriba Stormo in a sense, uh, because, well, she did play incredibly well in Wimbledon at Wimbledon, which yeah. is interesting, um, out of a player that plays incredibly physically and playing a third round in Wimbledon is when the courts are normally faster. Uh, you can you know that she has the potential to do well, like on hard courts as well. I think yeah. she her only title is on the hard court also. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, Guadalajara. I, I, forgot. Last. Yeah. Right. She beat a uh, Bussard in the final. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sariba Stormo won't get tired, but her her struggle is kind of similar to Sasnovich's. It's like she can, mm-hmm. in theory, she could take out anyone, but I don't see her like scoring back-to-back upsets like since every match is kind of going to be on her opponent's racket it'd be surprising to see her go too deep i think she can absolutely hold her seed and make to the third round um but i don't really see her beating bedosa yeah yeah i actually have her losing to kostiuk in the second round and then i have kostiuk bedosa 
Okay. Well, I uh, I disagree with you on that, Vaughn. I think okay. I, I, I think she'll beat Kostyuk. So th- okay. there, there's a disagreement for us. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad we disagree on something. That's, that's <laughs> it would be interesting um, if Tomlianovic actually pulls off the the upset of the tour, of the the first week by taking out the Doza in the first round. Oh, that yeah. That, I mean, that's a brutal first rounder. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a it's a tough one because Tomlianovic hasn't necessarily been the has has not the best history in the, in 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 the WTA right now she hasn't really managed to like get too too many matches but I think last half of last year she has been very consistent in general yeah. so we yeah in the quarterfinals so yeah that was, yeah I, I mean was I was I was surprised to see her unseated that's definitely not a first rounder you want um yeah. w- what do we think is going to happen with uh Sophia Kennan uh first of all does she get back past keys in the opening round hmm. yeah this is the one I'm hmm really thinking hard about because we've seen yeah. really great uh, lead-ups from Madison Keys before. Uh, mm-hmm. The one I look back on is 2019 Cincinnati, where she really uh, got herself back in the top 10, was looking like a really big force, was playing her power game. And then she um, she actually beat Kennan in the third round of the US Open. And then she lost to Svitolina, which is Svitolina's only top 10 win in the major um, in the fourth round. Uh, and then I think in 2020, Australian Open, she lost somewhere in the third or fourth round and she got to the final of the tournament before. So we've seen these kind of things before. I don't know if this will necessarily translate. I mean, she had a great week, um, but Alison Risk is uh, is an easier opponent than uh, Sophia Kennan, I would say. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see if she can do this. I mean, Kennan, I don't, I'm not sure where she's, she had. She played three matches the week before and she lost to Barty. That was the match we were talking about where Barty had 17 aces in the quarters. I guess that's a pretty decent, that's not a bad result against Barty. Um, and then this week, I think she lost to Kazakina, uh, mm-hmm. which is also a tricky opponent. But Yeah, I, I, think, I think for me, it's like I haven't seen much of Kennan as of lately. Yeah. She was out for a long time last year. Yeah. So I kind of lost touch with like how well she's playing, or how, where, is she, where is her confidence. She, she got back with the... Part in a partnership with her dad, I think, for coaching. Um, yeah. So that's that could be good for her, but Keys just won a tournament. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, I do think Kenan yeah. will get her game back, but I, I just think, yeah, maybe yeah. Keys right now is just too big of a force to yeah. open up against. So I think I, think, I have Keys yeah. getting through. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I would say Keys gets through as well. I think it could be like a three setter, but yeah. I think Keys gets through. Got it. Yeah, actually, I think Kenan I'm... would like it to go, like it to really be a scrap. And would really love to extend those rallies to get mm-hmm. keys to overplay um, in big moments. That would be a yeah. game plan, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I see the winner of Krejcikova and Azarenka in the fourth round, um, mm-hmm. w- winning this section. I do. Or too. in the third round? No, fourth round. Um, yeah, I think I think Bedosa will win the bottom half of this section, and then either Krejcikova or Azarenka will beat her. Mm. that's a good pick oh the other name that i thought of in this section is coco goff yeah um and she's been hitting her forehand a lot better uh to start off this season and that's usually the that's like the one shot for her right now that's a little bit behind where the rest of her game is at Mm -hmm. um and she she played a really tight match against keys it was it really could have gone either way it was seven five in the third yeah um and they could meet each other again in the third round it looks like yeah, I so, I see um I see golf beating keys but losing a close one to Bedosa. That's yeah. what I have as well. I have Bedosa um, getting through the quarters and then actually beating the whoever the winner of Krichikova. Uh, Krichikova's draw is pretty pretty doable until Azarenka. I, yeah. I would say. I mean Petkovic yeah. tricky, but she'll get through that. Um, yeah. Ostapenko is like the X factor in this section, but yeah, I actually geez. have like I could see like Vekic beating uh, Ostapenko. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It, it kind of feels like once Krajikova gets to the um, fourth round, like every match from there is going to be like a toss up. Um, right. Well, well, like on on um, seeding, she'd be favored to win them, but yeah. it still feels like they could go either way. Like I think Goff could absolutely win this section as well. Yeah. I'm gonna have an upset. I'm gonna say uh, Azarenka beats Krajikova. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, be conservative okay. here just because I feel like Krajikova has been solid last week enough for me yeah. to believe that she believes that she can do something in the Australian Open so I think she's going to make it into the 
quarters. Um, the quarters, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to say the same thing. I, f- I feel like she's been quite steady. Um, and li- like it won't surprise me if someone else wins this, but I feel like yeah. she's still the safest bet. Yeah, and I think I would pick Goff to go into the quarters as well, facing Krishikova in the quarters. I think she beats Pedosa, her, in Pedosa in the in the quarters, yeah. And in, in the quarters okay. were in the fourth round, yeah. Got it. Yeah, I think I'm going to say it's going to be Krejcikova and Bedosa um, and Krejcikova wins. Hmm. Another, another seed's holding. <laughs> yeah. I have um, Azarenko Bedosa rematch of Indian Wells final. I, I would love that. That would be, that'd that'd be amazing. Because yeah. I was just thinking about that match. I was, I know it's the second best match of the year. You you, you guys know which one I think was better. Um, but yeah. it was amazing to watch. It's they, actually played, <laughs> they actually played in the first round of uh, Adelaide. And this time it was a blowout. It was 6-3, 6-2 for Bedosa. Oh, Actually, that's like right. Yeah, similar, I remember that. Yeah, I, I think something similar will happen again Could, if they yeah. play. Like, I really feel like Bedosa is really getting close to winning a major. Like, she's yeah. I, I mean, and she's come up on it quite quickly. Like, she's improved so fast in such a short time. Mm. And um, there, there and just I, isn't a weakness in her game. Yeah, I, I I had actually forgotten about that rematch with Azarenka. I mean, that's quite the emphatic follow off. So yeah, I think she would definitely yeah. be favored if if they yeah. played again. I would say. Uh, it depends on how Bedosa sees herself like in majors because it, it depends. Like, for example, we have Esvitolina who has won so many big titles and hasn't really come that close to winning a major. If is Bedosa going to follow into the same path? I don't know, maybe, but maybe if she can still keep herself being aggressive and picking big targets, I think she and not like overplaying, I think she she's got the game. Right. Yeah. And her but, matches this week weren't too physical. I mean, Krajikova had the physical one against yeah. Kontave, then a physical one against Bedosa. And then I'm not sure if she's in the doubles draw. So that's the other right. um, hmm. thing as well, because she's so dedicated to doubles. So yeah. I, I just, you know, and then physically, uh, I'm going to have more concerns about Krajikova than I do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. But, but at the same time, like Krajikova did play like the entire singles and doubles draw at Roland Garros last year, and she played mixed. Right. And it still took her all the way until the US Open to kind of fade physically. Um, so I feel like at, at the start of the year, even though she's just had this tough tournament, I feel like she'll be fine. Yeah. So um, we have should we move so on far, to the next section? Yeah. In the quarterfinals now, we have uh, Sakari. For all of us, I think we got Sakari and Barty. And then yeah. the second quarters, we got different players. Got yeah. Goff and Krejcikova. Owen got Dosa and Krejcikova. And Vansh, who did you pick? Azarenka and Bedosa. Azarenka, Bedosa. Yeah. Cool. Disagreement. There yeah. you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So this next section, um, seeds are... Uh, Kontavit 6th and uh, Ravakina 12th. Um, oh. And b- both of these are informed players as well. So, man, yeah, Kontavit is. Uh, Kontavit... I think she's the clear favorite for this yeah, section I, to be. Yeah, I was just about to say, I don't think I can bet against her. Like, yeah. that, I mean, sure, she lost to Krejcikova, but like, that was, I mean, she she destroyed Krejcikova in that first set. Like, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, it was like she was hitting winners off of balls that didn't even yeah. look like like floaters it was like neutral ball and she would just hit a winner yeah. and then she went on to lose the match but she had match points i think like six of them um yeah, and it didn't really like feel that. like she choked it just felt like she lost oh, no. a really really close match to a slightly yeah. steadier player um yeah. so yeah i feel like if um I, I don't think that's gonna get in her head i mean she was joking on social media about it like <laughs> minutes after which was hilarious and amazing um so yeah i feel like she's gonna yeah. come out of this yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I I I do think like her level is really sky high and she could just keep it going. Her draw isn't the easiest though. I mean she has yeah. Sinyakova in the first round, not an easy opponent. Mm-hmm. And she has potentially Clara Tossin, who's mm-hmm. a really good young player. Yeah. And then Shelby Rogers is actually who beat her last year at the Australian Open. She was the only player outside of the top fifty to beat Gannett Contivate the whole year. So I mean I mean Shelby Rogers has always been tricky. Um, yeah, in hardcore majors recently, she's been yeah. she's been really uh, getting to the second weeks, uh, but I don't see her beating Contivate again. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think this is a different Contivate than we had this time. Yeah, last exactly. Year. I was gonna say like mm-hmm. it, she wasn't in the crazy winning streak that she put up like last right. year. Yeah, so I, I, mean, I think Sinyakova is interesting too. I don't think it's gonna go into a third set. Um, maybe Krejcikova might give give her some tips um, on how to play, but. <laughs> I yeah I, I still don't see it um, contemplate losing 
I, I really don't see her losing before anything, but anything before quarters or semis, like for mm. Conte at this point. So. Yeah. yeah. Same. Um, who do we think is going to come out of the bottom half of this section? Um, I'm kind of intrigued by a potential second rounder between um, Rabakina and Golubic. Um, yeah, that's I, the one I'm really interested in. Because I saw mm-hmm. Golubic playing Halep um, at the Melbourne tournament. And um and the end of that match was really high quality. She was striking the ball incredibly well, even though she lost the match. Uh, so I think that's Beautiful a potential one in the upset. <laughs> I, I have to admit, she did hit some really great shots <laughs> off that backhand. <laughs> um. So yeah, she's I mean, still, she's I the only player in the top hundred that actually has a one hander. Is she yeah, now the right only now. player? I think that was. Oh yeah, there's, no, uh, no, there's another one. player on the draw, uh, Diane Perry. Yeah. She has one. Uh, she plays Kostyuk in the first round. Yeah. Uh, but she's outside the top hundred. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, um, Owen. Uh, Golubic and Rabakina, for me, is like a really good section. Round. Same with um, Collins yeah. and Rogers, uh, yeah. All-American. Yeah, and I think the winner between uh, Golubic and um, Rabakina will play Contivate in the fourth round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, would, I, would, I would get to say that, too. I think Rabakina has more game in general, but yeah, um, yeah Golubic is, yeah. can Same play with, uh, like physical and, and powerful, so... Martins will probably just hold seed, I would say. Yeah, so it's a loss in the third round, then. Playing yeah. Verizon or Eva, who I think has made a final in the Australian Open before? Uh, sure. No, she made no? Wimbledon and US Open final in 2010. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then peaked and got to number two. Yeah. <laughs> and, and 12 years later, here she is. It's, yeah. That's it's, amazing. It's pretty um, amazing. Yeah, it would, it would be a great story if she could do well. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen much of her because she... She peaks before I was a I was a fan of tennis, but I, I think it's really cool mm-hmm. to see like these yeah. these old names trying to come back. She was a uh, if you ever watch, well, you can always go back and on YouTube, but like mm. uh, she's the classic hard hating um, Russian, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do we all have Contivate making the quarters? Yeah. Against, I was, I was yes. say I was just gonna pick Rybakina just for the sake of the seat, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, Contivate okay. against Rybakina in the fourth round. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Through the quarters, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I have that as well. Um, so in, in this yeah. next section, um, even though um we have Muguruza, who's uh the third seed, I think the most interesting name to me in this section is Simona Halef. Um, I mean mm-hmm. she's seated at fourteenth, but um yeah we know she probably like on on form she's probably higher than that. Um, so I'm I'm really curious to see what she can do here because it's it's a tough section. I mean, Sloane Stevens is here, U.S. Open champion Amaradu Kanu is here, um, world number three Muguruza is here. Um, so I'm so I'm kind of curious to see if Halep and Muguruza will make it to the the fourth round clash. Yeah. And because um, those two played in the Australian Open semis in 2020, and uh, Muguruza won in straights, but Halep had set points in the first and surfed for the second. Um, so I think those two could play another really close match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I have, um, I do have Halep getting through uh, the, to the fourth round. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other interesting match is Stephens and Raducanu. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, based on Raducanu's uh, what we analyzed about her in the last podcast and what she's uh, short, sort of short on matches, and also the the hype and everything around her. Mm-hmm. Um, and Stephen's probably just a little bit, little bit more of a safe bet, not by much, yeah. but um, I do have um, Stephen's coming through. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do too, but I do also want to acknowledge the possibility that Raducanu could get hot again and just mm-hmm. start trashing her opponents again. Um, I mean, I think it, it's unlikely to happen because, you know, her form has lapsed since she won that US Open. It's a different atmosphere now with the pressure and everything. But I mean, that game, like there are no issues with her game. Um like she just hasn't played her best, so I think if if she does start to play her best, she could she could win this section. Yeah. I don't think it'll happen, but it's a possibility. Yeah, I think Raducanu is like the biggest question mark, weirdly, in this draw because mm-hmm. yeah. we see we saw what she was capable of, um, and to do that for like I think ten matches, that's that's what re- was required of her to win the US Open. Um, it's it means that she has a ceiling that she can keep for a long time. Yeah, for sure. But, I'd love to see yeah. like that best version tested yeah. against the best version of Stephens, like with her, yeah. Yeah. With her defense and her fluidity yeah. around the court. Yeah, that I would mean, be the, like I, my dream. Like the the rallies, just, can you imagine? 
like and right away we get yeah. a match of the year type match that that yeah. i mean that's like really hyping things up but but, like, but still that, that would be good amazing. yeah i think yeah. i think right kind of could we could see a peaking Raducanu for like three rounds and then it would be a little bit rougher after that. I don't know why it's just like, I feel like it's almost unfair that Raducanu would just peak for the slams like that and just thrash every opponent. Imagine she just kind of like wins the Australian Open without losing a set. I mean, <laughs> that would kind of be wild. Kind of difficult to imagine, but she already did it. So D- what else, like what a, can we even do? Like, I mean, <laughs> be like Vavrenka on steroids without peaking at the majors. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, t- something crazy to me is that. Stevens and Halif could play in the third round, and um, less than four years ago they were in a major final um, against each other. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of crazy how fast um, how fast stuff can change, yeah. even though a lot can happen in four years. Um, and 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 I do think we will get that match between Halif and Stevens, and then I think um, and then I think the winner of that will play Muguruza, um, mm. who will probably win that match to make the quarters. I think. Yeah, I'm. I will say that if Halep makes it into the the third the fourth round, um, I think she makes it past Muguruza. Not that like not that I think Muguruza isn't isn't a great player. I just think that um, weirdly she plays well and then she doesn't, and then she has done more playing well than not playing well last year. But I think it can happen, and I think um, Halep is. In in my own view, I think Halep is a bigger champion than Muguruza is. I feel like she's she's more cons- the more consistent of the two, and I think she has more of a a capability of coming through top situations than Muguruza mm-hmm. has. But I could I could very well be wrong. I would say that the the um, the margin is very very slim between those two. So. Yeah, I, I was actually about to change my mind and say Halep would win that one, so I go yeah. against the top seeds a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that would be a really interesting match, though. And then the winner of that would have Contivate in the quarters, right? Or um, is this the yes. fifth or the sixth section? Yeah, the winner of this would have um, Contivate. You would have Contivate, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be, that would be crazy. Um, if we had um, like Muguruza and Contivate or Halif and Contivate, I mean, w- winner of that could win the title. Um, yeah. Right. But for me, I'll just say yeah. if um, Halif and Muguruza play, and they're both sort of at or near their best. Well, we saw that match play out in 2020, Australian Open. They had a really yeah. nice like semifinal. Yeah. With Muruza coming through in like two really tight sets. Yeah. I just think of the two though, Halep is a more safer bet to get to the quarters. Hmm. Um, like just because her, you know, with her consistency, and you can always just kind of rely on her outlasting opponents. Whereas with Muguruza, I feel like there's more peaks and valleys. Um, yeah. definitely. I mean that that's true, but at the same time, I think Halif has less firepower, and that means mm-hmm. she's more susceptible to kind of being blown off the court. Like I remember last year, um, she played Serena in I think the fourth round, or no, I think that was the quarters actually. And um, I was expecting like a really tight match, but Serena was playing incredibly well, like hitting all her spots, and she kind of just swept Halif aside. Um, yeah. And so I think that's more likely to happen to Halif than Muguruza. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I I honestly don't know what's going to happen, but I do think like one of them, yeah. one of the two of them will make the quarters. I, I will say though that um, a peaking Serena Williams is a, a different beast. To, yes, to yes, but, yeah. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, yeah. but I, that's I, what I, I, would, I would I would say is like if Muguruza and Halep meet, then I'm yeah. going with Muguruza. But I just think. Um, but you think Halep has a better chance okay, of getting there? Yeah. Yeah, but I think I do, Halep has yeah. a better chance of getting. I do. I do want to see a Raducanu Halep match. I think yes. it'd be more oh interesting than than Stevens Halep. Not that it's going to be bad, but I feel like I just I just think that Raducanu needs to get back on her feet quicker. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I mean, I, play a couple good matches. I I just want to see Raducanu play like former major champions. Like I want to see her play everyone. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, v- Von, who do you think? Um, could take out Muguruza from the bottom section there. So I would say Heather um, Watson. No, you know what? I look even Zidane before check? that. Um, Elise Cornet in the second round. Mm, okay, interesting. Is uh, is one that nobody wants to play. Uh, Elise Cornet, yeah. but she's she's got yeah. some big wins in her career early rounds of um, majors and other tournaments too. Um, the one that comes to my mind was when she beat Serena at Wimbledon in 2014, mm. in the third round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's also recently, she took a set off Osaka from a breakdown uh, mm-hmm. in Osaka's first match back as well. Hmm. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, I guess Cornet so, is... So like, that, would, yeah. that would be the one. I mean, if she gets through Cornet, then uh, I like her chances in the third round. 
and then the fourth round is then would be against Halep. So yeah, I would say if she if she if it was one round, I'd predict her to lose. Would probably be yeah. hesitantly predict would be the second round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And since and, we're going chalk all the time, I have to come up with you know some yeah. some well, kind of a. We gotta do some mental upset. gymnastics to say it's why Kovalev I mean, is going to beat everyone. I, I, I'm just waiting right. for the the bottom section because I'm gonna predict that Savalenko loses early. Um, that oh. won't come as a surprise. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna lose to Fernandez again, and uh, so I think it's like a fourth Halep round. And um, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I have Halep and Contevate, and I think Contevate makes it through. Okay, I, I'll say Muguruza and Contevate then. Okay, yeah, I also have I have uh, Halep and Conte uh, with Andre. Okay, um, all right. So section seven have um, Igor Sviantek seventh seed, uh, Anastasia Pav Pav Pavlyuchenkova tenth seed, and then a, a lot of in there. Yeah, Kvitova is there. Yeah, so still her final singles tournament of uh, her career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd, be, it'd be good to see a story. I think. Yeah, it would be cool if um she could make it through a couple of rounds. Um, I, I think I'm, I feel like I can say pretty safely that I think Sviantek will make the fourth round at least. I mean, she's been consistently going pretty deep yeah. at these majors. Yeah. Um, I think the I think Australia suits her game pretty well. I mean, last year she lost to Halif, but for a set she was kind of dominating. Um, it really looks like the better player, yeah. and since then I think she's improved so on hard. Yeah. So I feel like um I feel like she'll make it out. I, I think she'll make the quarters actually. Yeah. Like I, I don't really see anyone in the section getting really yeah, hot and beating her. I, I just have one name though. Um yeah. that's uh Dario Kazakina in the third round. Yeah, yeah that that could be yeah. you know, back to back semis this week and they played once, but it was on grass and Dario Kazakina won the last two sets, six love, six one. Um, okay. When was this? It was a warm up. It was in Eastbourne, I think, before Wimbledon. Okay. But this year? Um, yeah, uh, twenty twenty one okay. Wimbledon. Oh, before right. that, like, but 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 I do think she gets to the fourth round at least. Yeah, it's it's yeah, not she an gets easy. To the fourth round. Yeah. I, I I like her chances because yeah. Kvitova, you know, I don't see doing much damage in this tournament. Yeah, and then um, Pavs. I think if she does get to the fourth round, I would pick Skrantek over her. Yeah, um, I think so same. too. Yeah. So I think yeah. I think Kvitova lose could lose to. Kirstea Kirstea. In the first round, yeah. To be fair. yeah, I think so too. That's that's not a first rounder you want. Uh, Cersei yeah. has got a really well rounded game, but I also think Kvitova, Kvitova could win this section. Um, I mean, I think she's probably the one who Sviantek would want to play the least, even though Pavlyuchenkova mm. is ranked higher. I mean, Kvitova was a finalist here three years ago, it's a set away from the title, so right, yeah. Uh, this, this, the one story here that's kind of interesting is Samantha Stoser, 2011 US Open champion. Like, this is her last tournament, uh, she's announced. In singles, yeah. So she would be retiring. Uh, yeah, I mean, she'll get huge crowd so. support, presumably. Exactly. I think she could. She has a chance of like making it to the third round. Honestly, like yeah. if if everything falls into place, she could even make it into the fourth. Like suppose, uh, um, yeah, definitely. Kirstia, yeah, makes it into her into into the third round, and then Stozer could beat Pavlyuchenkova. Yeah, I want to see her and Pavs um, in the second round. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but I think it would be a really good story if it did. Oh, you think she's going to lose um, early? Like I think round? she's going to. I think she's going to lose two Pavs. Oh, Pavs in the, oh, in the, second Pavs round. In the yeah. Pavs in the second round. Yeah, that's yeah. what I have as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I would I would say Shiante gets out of her quarter, like makes it yeah. to the quarters. Yeah, me too. I I almost think it's kind of irrelevant who she plays. Like I think if. Hmm. Well, I mean, in the fourth round, like I think if it's if it's Kvitova, like and Kvitova is in good form, I think that could be an amazing match. But I feel like that's that's a big if. I don't think Kvitova yeah. has been at her best recently. Um, so yeah, I think I think Sviantek is a solid pick to make the quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I I will agree with that too. Yeah, the bottom section is wide open because um, yeah. Sapolinka are really struggling right now with her serves. And yeah, the, game. The, the match I want to see here is um, a rematch of Kerber and Fernandez, which I think yeah. was probably yeah. the most underrated match of the US Open. I think point for point, it may, might have been better than ones that got more attention like uh, Alcaraz Tsitsipas, because um, it, it was really physical tennis, great rallies, um, really tight first two sets. Yeah. And then Fernandez just outlasted Kerber in the third set, which is incredibly tough to do. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to see that. 
Um, and, I, and I think it can happen too, because Fernandez, and she got blown out by Sviantec uh, recently, but there's no shame in that. And she won't play a player that good before she plays Kerber. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it's definitely possible. But Kerber has a really tough first rounder in Kanepi. Um, mm-hmm. It's right pretty, much, pretty much the worst one she could have gotten. Um, mm-hmm. So so that'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, you know who's not struggling with her serve? Marino, who hit 24 aces to three double faults in her last round in the qualifying. Is, it was is Marino bit. Canadian, Andre? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I mean, twenty four aces is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say though that I think she worked on her serve during the off season because her second serve is ridiculous right now. It's it's got a massive kick, which it wasn't really doing last year, and now it it really does. So it's cool. I mean, if she if she were to meet Kerber in the second round, uh, which is a possibility, I think Buskova yeah. is a tough first round for a qualifier ranked outside of the top one hundred. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's it, it could be a cool match. So you never know. But yeah, I'm definitely rooting for Fernandez uh, Kerber third round. I think it would be fantastic to see a rematch of that. I think I wonder how Kerber would approach this match too after the loss at the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, um, I'm really I, just I think... hoping Kerber can Kerber and uh, Fernandez can meet in the third round. Yeah, man, yes. that that would be that'd be one I would absolutely wake up for. I think mm-hmm. in Sabalenka's section is interesting because I mean, if she's playing well, it's hard to see her not making the fourth round. But with with the trouble on serve she's having, feels like she could lose to absolutely anyone. I mean, I think what what was it thirty nine double faults across two matches? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, with with numbers like that, you can't get a, fr- yeah. a guaranteed win against anyone. So. I think her first round will be incredibly telling. Like either mm-hmm. she'll have worked it out or it'll continue. And every match is kind of going to be like walking a tightrope. And I really don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. And she's the world number two. It's a fantastic yeah. player. Maybe she has worked it out, but it's tough to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tough to say. There's also Ann Lee in that section who's yeah. uh, playing really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I think if Sabalenka is still having the Ypsilon serve, I feel like she'd probably make it through the first round, but then Ann, Ann Lee would take her out in the second. Yeah, I'm wondering like what is it going to be? Where is it going to be played as well? I am assuming it's going to be um, either Rod Laver or the the second biggest arena in Melbourne, which I think is John Kay now um, that they called it. But it could be it could be huge support if I can see the the, the flag right. It's a uh, it's an Australian, so it could be interesting for support. Um, it, it wondering like if, if the crowd would get into Sabalenka's head in that match, but. And with a double fault, I think the, the Australian might think, hey, it might be my chance. <laughs> so my, my home slam. So, you know what I got? I got uh, Marino getting to the third round now. You do? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I'm going to pick some. I got to pick something, you know, and the yeah. qualifiers, you know, they're, they're confident. They're playing really well. Yeah. I watched Marino play last year in Toronto. She beat uh, Bedosa. Yeah. It was uh, in Montreal. But... Or Montreal. Yeah. yeah. I always get them mixed up. It's but... fine. But uh, but yeah, that would be cool to see like an all Canadian clash. So I'll go for that. that and then I'll have Fernandez yeah. in the fourth round. And then honestly, I feel like she could get to the quarters because that Savalenko section is wide open. I'm going to say yeah. Samsonova gets out of that. She's another player. Mm. She's a player who's uh, yeah. a bit underrated, but she had a really good Fed Cup. She won like all of her matches. Um, and like she she uh, carried uh, Russia to the victory. Yeah. yeah. Um, she played brilliantly in doubles too, which also means that she has a really good uh, has really good skills at the net. So it could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so. I, I think I think Fernandez is going to be the quarterfinalist here. Like yeah. I think yeah. I, I feel like Kerber has better odds of going out early. Um, and I think if they do play, like it was it was a close match, but in the end, Fernandez beat her pretty decisively at the U.S. Open, decisively enough that I don't feel comfortable like changing. Um, changing my pick from that result. And then mm-hmm. in the bottom section, I feel like it'll either be Lee or Vondrosova coming out. I think oh, both of them will lose to Fernandez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say it'd be either Lee or Samsonova, who I just, uh, even yeah. though Vondrosova was seated uh, 31st, I feel like yeah. that's a tough round. That's a tough second round. Yeah. Uh, I think I will um, say, I think I'll say Samsonova. And Fernandez up into the fourth, and I, I would say Fernandez makes it into the quarters. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have Shiantek and Fernandez, and then I have um, Shiantek getting through that. Man, I definitely would I, like to see a rematch of the between Fernandez and Shiantek. I think yeah. Fernandez really would love to get another shot at edge to be on deck very soon. Yeah, I, I think it's unlikely that she would lose um comfortably again. I mean yeah, or that I, comfortably I would, I, I again. Yeah, really, I, think, I could see a really close match actually yeah. them if they play. Yeah. Like like could very well win in straights again, but like different different court, uh different atmosphere. Um I think different game plan probably yeah. for uh Fernandez. So yeah, I think that'd be really interesting. Um, so do we want to work our way from the bottom up in terms of uh, predicting the quarterfinal results then? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I think um, I, I think Sviantek would probably beat Fernandez still, make her first uh, major semifinal uh, away from Clay. Um, I think that'd be a great way for her to start the year as well, um, really establishing that she's a well-rounded player. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Fernandez, like... Part because of heart, part because of head, but I would say 70% heart that I want to see Fernandez making another deep run in a major again. Yeah. And I think she will have worked out a few more tactics and how to play against Fiontech after being blown out uh, in like a couple weeks ago. So um, I'll, I'll say um, Fernandez in a classic three set battle that's going to, you know, electrify the 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 rod laver arena again so yeah i mean sign me up for that sounds amazing <laughs> amazing yeah uh and then yeah so then we have contivate beating hello who did you pick Vansh, for uh oh you picked shiantek as well for for sims yeah, shiantek for sims yeah um, then okay. i'm deciding between contivate and help and i'm gonna say contivate again for this one yeah i'm gonna say contivate as well I think I think Muguruza beats Contivate. She had good success against her yeah. at the end of the year last year, um, mm. and she's she's done very well at the Australian Open in the past. So I think she'll play up to her seating, make the semis. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I I would also agree with that if I had Muguruza in the quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. but I, yeah. I went with Halep. So I was, I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I think um, I, I think Halep Contivate could be a really interesting match. It'd be classic offense defense. Um, but that'd be a really fun watch as well. Yeah. Mm. So then I have Contivate. Shviantek. And actually they actually they played each other twice in the majors last year. Once at Roland Garros and once at the US Open in the fourth round. The fourth round match at the US Open. Or the third round match. It was the third round, yeah. Against uh it was the third round both places actually in the Roland Garros and the US Open. Shviantek won them both. Okay, I was gonna. I was gonna uh, say somehow I don't remember either of those. Um, yeah, I was gonna say too. Like, right. thank, thank you, Vansh, for being here because yeah, otherwise like, we would just. <laughs> no, I'm looking them up now. So that that one at um, oh okay. So I do remember the one at Roland Garros. It was a it was an amazing first set. It was really tight, and Contivate was playing great tennis. Yeah. But was it a tiebreaker, and then yeah, but but yeah. Sviantek snuck it out anyway, and then dominated the second set. I think that I, was after that match. I was so confident she would win the title. Um. And the then US the US Open six three in the third. Yeah, that was a that was a very high level match. Yeah, yeah. man, it looks like a looks like Sviantek was all over Contivate's serve. She was six for twenty on break points, um, one fifty seven return points, um, uh, but only served at forty nine percent. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting caught up in the I guess stats. It would just, um, I guess it would just suggest that Contivate is getting closer to um, Sviantek in this matchup. Yeah, so, and that hard is a more favorable surface for her. Yeah. yeah, and then with the you know with uh, the wins already against Fernandez and uh, with Contivate's red hot form, I could honestly see Contivate in the final. So I do have. Yeah. And then I, the thing is that that I do remember they played once, uh, Shiontek and Contivate in the fourth round in 2020. So it was a while back, but your memory um, is something else, man. With Contivate yeah. winning it, six seven seven five seven five. Are you writing and... a book yet, Mosh? <laughs> No, but it's in. It, I do plan on writing a book on tennis at some point after my career is over, whatever I decide. To <laughs> well, you, you, you send yeah. us a note when it's ready, so we can be the first yeah. ones to buy it. Um, yeah. I, I agree with you guys. It was the first draft. Contivate would beat Shviantek, Um, if they play, I think with Muguruza and Shviantek, I I think I would still go for Muguruza. Um, mm. I feel like she's mm. got more experience. Um, yeah. more experience going deep at um, the Australian Open. So yeah, and that'll that'll be her second Australian Open final in the last three years, and the one she didn't make 
be a loss for match points up against the eventual champion Naomi mm-hmm. Osaka. So not too bad. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but um, yeah. I but yeah, I think her. I think that number three seating is gonna. Um, she's yeah. gonna more than live up to that. I will say I'll, I'll say Contevate because I pick Contevate and um, Fernandez into the semis. I think Contevate makes it into the final. Just by virtue, I, I think um, Contevate's game is a little bit more complete than uh, Fernandez at this stage of their careers. Mm-hmm. Um, and despite having lost a brilliant, brutal match against Krichikova, it was not a match that you that you you know it was it's five hundred. It was not like. The Grand Slam final is not a match that you like. You lose a leap for like you probably just think about it like, man, I could have won this match. But then like two days I later, I think she'll like, shrug oh, it yeah, off. Cool, rather yeah, quickly. you can shrug it. It was like I didn't lose this match. It's like I, yeah, she won it like fair and square, and she played incredible tennis as well. So I think she's going to be very much ready and hungry to make it into the finals, and I think that's <sighs> what's going to happen. Yeah, and then the next uh, top half, I I had um, Bardi and Bedosa. Body with those semis. the semis. Yeah. And now this is the stage where we've seen Bardi um, struggle a little bit yeah. with uh, expectations. Yeah. Because in 2020, she had that loss to Kennan, which was sort of a, a weird yeah. finish in both sets because she was ahead of both. And she probably could have um, closed those out. And then she had the experience last year of uh, losing from a setup against Bukova. Yep. Right. So now hopefully she'll be able to deal with those expectations better and just yeah. sort of perform at her, her at her very highest level. Yeah, it, it does seem like she's ready. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like she achieved her childhood dream of winning Wimbledon. So that was resisting a ton of big, pressure. Yeah. Um, and the way she won that match as well, with Pliskova coming back at her after party served for the match, had to save break point in the last game. Um, so yeah, I do feel like Barty is ready to face this this pressure as well. So I think she'll she'll beat Sakari in the quarters and then I think she'll beat Krajikova in the semis as well. Yeah. Um so yeah. And then yeah and then in the final I see Barty beating um my god. Uh sh- I think it was no, no, I'm, nope. no, I think I said um my god how am I forgetting this? Uh Muguruza, jeez. Muguruza. Um yeah. Yeah that that'd be a really interesting match. Um Barty Muguruza, yeah, I think I yeah. watched that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You think um one and Mugurusa, three? Mugurusa does not like the slice, so that that is right. Uh, yeah, really yeah, that's true. Um, Wasn't there a Twitter thread about this? It was kind of yeah, <laughs> there was just commenting that really savage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like Barty would be a favorite, but the, I mean, all the pressure would be on her. Um, hmm. so so that would be interesting to see as well. Yeah. I, uh, although again, like I do feel like she's ready. I think the. The Wimbledon final last year, she won like the first 14 points or something crazy like that. Um, like the nerves didn't affect her at all in the beginning. So yeah, I, I feel like there I would have to lean Barty as well. Yeah. I am going to say Barty beats Kritikova in a, in the semifinals. I think it's going to be a somewhat straightforward two-setter, like something like a along the lines of I'm calling the scores, but you don't have to. Like I would say like a seven, six, six, four along like this this type of score line. And Contavate in the final is she's she's been so you know so good in the past. I feel like it's going to be a very very difficult match. I would say Barty wins in the final again, but um, I don't think it's going to be an easy one. Mm-hmm. Just because I as I think as you said as you put it, oh, and she's she's more confident right now. She's she's ready. She's done super well at Wimbledon. She's well, she has been number one before at the Australian Open, but this time it just feels like a more established number one, if you will, like, yeah, a more dominant number one. Okay. So yeah, um, there you v- go. V- Vaughn, you better pick someone different than us. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> yes. I'm gonna this has been a lot of sameness. So you guys, you guys both have Barty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my two semifinals were um, Bardi versus Bedosa and Sviantek against Contivate. Sviantek, Contivate, I picked Contivate only to get to the final. Now, Bardi, Bedosa is kind of interesting because they met twice on clay and they split both of them last year in Charleston and then uh, they uh, Bardi got her back in Madrid. But those were on clay, very different. Um, this time, though, you know what? Bedosa, her form is like really tempting me. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I thought you might say that. And, yeah. <laughs> And with the way that she's playing right now, and 
the um, confidence she has, like just, you know, not only Indian Wells, but also WTA finals. I mean, she lost to Muguruza in the semis, but, and then also winning this tournament this week. I feel like her game is really getting there, like to the next level. Mm -hmm. And if she can keep on hitting heavy and keep varying up her paces uh, and really target the party's backhand, um, and like come forward whenever she can. It's going to be really tricky because Barty's going to try to find her weaknesses and use the slice, maneuver her around the court. She's going to be able to pick her apart in ways previous mm -hmm. opponents couldn't. So Barty, so Bedosa is going to have to rely on her all round power and serve. And yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be really fascinating. And then, but Barty has all the pressure and Bedosa yeah. is sort of riding free at that point, but she's still super competitive. Yeah. Uh, and, J I have to be different. I have to be different. And you know what? <laughs> Bedosa Bedosa, Bedosa is really All right. So I, I'm going to go with Bedosa Contivate in the final. Okay. I, I was going to say, just in tennis terms, like it's going to be so hard for anyone to beat Vardy with that package of the serve and the slice in the forehand. Yeah. Like I think, yeah. I think someone is going to need like a big hiccup from Vardy to beat her unless Pico Sako shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or I'll say this that maybe Sakurai drags her to the trenches. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Sakurai is one of the only ones who could maybe match her in terms of like surf botting, um, and like taking care of her service games. Surf botting is not the right word, but in terms of like serving really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, who, who, who's so, your winner, Vansh? So I, I do have Bedosa over Contivate. I have Bedosa. Bedosa over. winning wow. her first Grand Slam, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I mean, I th I think that that would be a great result as well. Like she's. I mean, if honestly, it already feels like she's ready to make that jump. Like, mm -hmm. I, th I think mentally she's there. Um, in that first big final she played in Indian Wells, so poised, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. navigated the dip of losing the second set really, really well. Um, didn't panic when Azarenka served at five four thirty love. So, yeah, I could, I could see yeah. it for sure. I think, I think it could be interesting though because it, it always feels like a Grand Slam is different. Um, not just yeah. because of the format and things like that, but it, it always feels like, man, it, this is like one of the most prestigious tournaments in the world. Like Indian Wells is, she has the benefit of like having played what people, most players consider the fifth Grand Slam. So that's really good. But I don't know. I feel like after winning Indian Wells with no expectations, coming here, having a lot more expectations, like if she were to meet uh, Contavate in the final, who is the real favorite in this matchup, really? Like, we have Contavate, who's won like 26 out of like 30 matches that she's played. And then you have Bedosa, who won Indian Wells and pretty much cracked in the top 10 and just stay there for. Yeah. It's, and it's who just won a tournament as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, it feels like honestly, every match not involving Vardy, like the ones in the bottom section that we were just projecting, like don't have favorites. Like they're, yeah. they're so hard to pick. I mean, I think like, I think Contavate would be the favorite against a lot of, a lot of top players, but. Mm -hmm. I could still see her losing because, yeah, um, yeah. because it's Barty, <laughs> right? And I'm also, um, yeah, I, I mean, and I, I could also see her losing to uh, Muguruza if they played. Um, mm -hmm. I think she would be the the underdog in that one. But yeah, I mean, she might be. I think she's seated sixth, right? Yeah. Um, it feels like she could only play like maybe three players where she wouldn't be the favorite. Like I feel like against anyone except um, Muguruza, Barty, and Osaka, she would be the favorite. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's I I can't wait for this. I think it's going to be yeah. a great tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just a reminder for the listeners that we are all, we are finishing with just the WTA draw. We're not doing the men's draw because uh, Djokovic Djokovic's trial. hearing is going on right now. As is it still going on as we yeah. speak? Oh my goodness. Yep. <laughs> I feel like if they were cut out like the language by something that normal people could understand, this meeting would take like 30 minutes. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I really, I genuinely wanted to watch it. I just couldn't I can't, understand. I could not understand. Yeah. 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 And if you do understand like this, uh, please let us know in the comments, like uh, on Twitter and like reply to us like, Oh yeah, this is what they're trying to say or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah. And by the, by the time this, Twitter yeah. thread by Karen Sweeney to help explain. Yes, it. I'm I'm following that as well. Nice. Yeah, I, I mean these these Australian reporters like are not sleeping. Like they're oh my it's goodness. like every time something happens, an article is immediately up within like five minutes, um, breaking it down. It's amazing. I I aspire to be like these people. I wish I was like running um an energy drink company right now because they must be buying all of those. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, as you listen to this episode, this trial is hopefully probably over but um yeah we will 
probably come back on uh, Monday or something to discuss the men's draw. Um, there might be some matches will be which will be over at that point, but we'll we'll work with what we've got. There's still two weeks of tournament ahead of us, and hope you're excited as we are about the tennis. Um, other things, it's up to you whether you like it or not. But we're excited about the tennis, and we think that the Australian Open is going to be amazing. Yes, um, looking forward to not sleeping it's the, yeah. the only two weeks all year well where i'll say that yeah as i as i said i am most likely not going to be sleeping at least for the first week and if things go as i predicted for fernandez reaching the semis count me in for two weeks of not sleeping i mean <laughs> in regular you're, hours you're lucky that this is your job though because you can sleep during the day like Ponce and i have to go to school <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> that is definitely true so hoping that you guys get to attend this journalism i think once uh, well, i don't necessarily know like what you want no what oh my goodness like my english is completely breaking up this is the the result of not sleeping already so um yeah if you guys go into the tennis world let's meet in a tournament and have fun and oh and by the time that you're 21 let's have a beer yeah for sure (laughs) (laughs) hopefully um hopefully we'll all find ourselves in melbourne uh in a few years yeah (laughs) yeah I, I absolutely can't wait for the Australian Open to start, even though I know my life will be an absolute mess the next two weeks. Yeah. Trying to manage school yeah. and yeah. job I got on campus, along with um, yeah. all the tennis, but it's all worth it because yeah. sleep is We can always count on uh, highlights. Yeah. On I mean, um, I don't know about you guys, but this is my favorite tournament of the year. And um, yeah. Rod, Rod Laver Arena is also my favorite court on tour. Like yesterday, I was on Twitter um, and I like retweeted a photo of it and I was like, best court on tour and someone responded with a photo of the monte carlo court um i was like no rod laver arena is bluer than the water uh in the background (laughs) um which is which is kind of true um so yeah i'm i'm so excited yeah rod laver in the australian open for me just beat uh wimbledon but Mm. it's not by much but yeah in any case um thanks guys for the talk and uh for the hard work on the draws and picking different players to win and not trying to display the seeds, which is weird, right? Like we haven't done this like in a while, like for the WTA, it has been like, man, every single player could win this tournament. And now like, yeah, Barty's probably going to win this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, e- even if not Barty, it feels like th- this feels more hierarchical than normal. I don't know if yeah. I pronounced that right, it really but it feels like, pro- it feels like we're picking from a handful this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could really see like towards the end of the season, especially WTA finals and stuff, like the players in the bottom part of the top 10 like they're really coming into their own now so that makes mm. it really interesting yeah. that's cool that's cool too yeah you can at least put the depth in tears you know yeah so that that makes it <laughs> yeah i mean and like it's it, like as always it's nice to have the contrast from the atp where we're picking from three guys to win um yeah like either yeah i mean three guys whether or not Djokovic plays because like if he plays then him medvedev or the other guy and if he doesn't play it's medvedev the other guy and at all maybe um yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah it's, it's just nice to have both things going on um yeah i'm excited for the atp preview too because i can i can't wait to <clears throat> look at nadal's draw and pick him yeah. to lose in the quarterfinals <laughs> right so you who's um, biting his nails right now is mir mir he has no oh idea yeah in the first round it's i mean this is gonna sw- like this is a massive money swing for him potentially it's like, like yeah, lucky because... loser novak Djokovic. <laughs> right i mean yeah because or... like if if the number one if you beat the number one mm. spot you get the number one draw like that's it's potentially a great thing for him um yeah so um but yeah i mean my laptop is gonna die soon um yeah so i should i should end this and send it off to you um exactly and so is my voice going to die so yeah. thanks for <clears throat> oh man <laughs> i am sorry <laughs> listeners we can we can probably cut out just the last five minutes of this. i might i might but in any, yeah. any case <laughs> listeners thanks for listening that's your job um leave us a review uh, on <laughs> leave us a review on the cast on eight <laughs> apple apple podcasts and see you later <laughs> bye 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 <laughs>